For this presentation, I'd like to focus a little bit on the path of the sun against the background stars, and also the apparent path of the sun as viewed from Earth. Also the seasons and the zodiac. So the Earth goes around the sun once a year, and from the Earth's point of view, the sun is going around the Earth and that is our perspective. So the apparent path of the sun against the sky is called the ecliptic and also it's the path that the earth actually makes around the sun. So that forms what's called the ecliptic plane as well. Now we discuss the seasons. So as the Earth is going around the Sun on this ecliptic path. The Earth is tilted with respect to the plane of the ecliptic. So here's the plane of the ecliptic and perpendicular to the plane of the ecliptic the orientation of the rotational axis of the Earth is altered by 23 and a half degrees. It's tilted. This is also called the obliquity wonderful fancy term corresponding to the tilt of the earth. And the seasons result from the tilt of the earth's rotational axis as it orbits the sun. In fact that's true for other planets as well. For instance Mars is almost of the same axial tilt as earth and it has seasons as well. So let's look at a basic picture of the orbit of Earth around the Sun. So here we have it and there's some special locations. We have winter solstice, spring equinox, summer solstice, autumnal equinox. And the basic idea is because of the tilt which you notice is always the same at each of these locations that 23 and a half degree tilt at times will be oriented toward the Sun in the northern hemisphere that's what summer solstice is in which case the rays of the Sun hit the northern hemisphere more directly now it's halfway in between on the autumn equinox the autumnal e equinox the winter solstice we're tilted away from the Sun so the rays of the Sun hit us in the northern hemisphere at a more glancing angle and you can see the elongated shadow here in the equinoxes it's halfway in between and the days the amount of the the daylight itself the amount of sunlight is exactly 12 hours in fact that's true everywhere on earth so that's the reason for the seasons the path of the sun during a year in a little more detail keep in mind that on the celestial equator the stars are essentially fixed to it so they don't move around other than over long periods of time so they're fixed on the celestial sphere but the Sun is not so fixed it migrates so the Sun the apparent path of the Sun is following this ecliptic and you can see that it rises higher over here and lower down on the other side from the point of view of Earth positioned as it is here so we're in the northern hemisphere and we see the Sun rise higher at well in the summer season right and then in the winter it's below or south actually south of the equator so just to highlight some of these positions the spring equinox the spring equinox right here interestingly it's precisely where the celestial equator and the ecliptic cross it's the crossing of those two planes the Sun is migrating north is crossing the celestial equator there's equal day and night at this time and the date is essentially March 21st the daylight is in the process of increasing so as the Sun migrates we have more and more daylight the Sun is rising higher in the sky then we have the summer solstice and it's the farthest north the Sun ever gets highest in the northern sky highest in the sky at all in the northern hemisphere it corresponds to the longest days the most amount of sunlight and it's around June 21st plus or minus a day or so then as it continues to migrate around the ecliptic path we have the fall equinox over here 
and the sun is moving south. It's crossing the celestial equator again, equal day and night once again. The amount of nighttime is now substantially increasing. This occurs around September 21st. And finally, the winter solstice, where it's furthest in the southern sky and lowest in the northern sky. Shortest days, sun is not up very long from a northern hemispherian point of view. It occurs on around December 21st. So those are the key locations on the ecliptic where the seasons are marked as to their beginning and then the cessation of the previous one. A little bit more on the motion of the sun as it traverses the ecliptic. This is the path of the sun over a full year and we see it rising and falling and then going from northern latitudes to southern latitudes on the celestial sphere. Doesn't remain fixed like the stars. The sun passes through about two hours of right ascension per month. Here's the right ascension and two hours times 12 months is 24 hours as it goes around the ecliptic. Interestingly there are rapid changes in declination during the equinoxes. You see the sun is moving at a constant rate along this ecliptic but the amount of declination change is maximized here and here. Where it's minimized up at the top of its flight, so to speak, it's moving along the circle at the same rate, but it doesn't change elevation much in this region. It's kind of like hang time, very similar to hang time. Someone jumping up into the air, seem to hover in the air a bit because their motion vertically is minimal up at the top of the flight. Same thing here. So in Alaska, we would notice during the equinoxes that the amount of daylight changing per day is about six minutes at the maximum, whereas in the Chicagoland area, where this isn't as steep, it is three or four minutes. But in this region, at the solstices, you don't notice any change day to day hardly for a while. Well, if we are at 40 degrees north latitude, then this shows the path of the sun at various dates. So on the equinoxes, we have the sun rising due east, rising up to 50 degrees, because 40 degrees from the horizon to the north celestial pole, and 40 degrees from the zenith to the celestial equator. So that's how high the sun gets in the sky, and it sets due west. On the solstices, particularly the summer solstice, it rises north and south. I'm sorry, it rises north of of the of east, 23 and a half degrees, and sets 23 and a half degrees north of west, and the opposite for the winter solstice, 23 and a half degrees south of those locations. And so, how high does the sun get in the sky? Well summer solstice, it's going to be the 50 degrees plus another 23 and a half degrees because the sun is higher in the sky toward the south, actually toward the north I guess you might say, it's higher in the southern sky. But you never in this, at this latitude see the sun directly at your zenith. The highest it can get is 50 plus 23 and a half. And since in the Chicagoland area actually the declination is about 42 degrees, we would actually be closer to 71 and a half degrees here as the maximum height off the horizon that the sun attains in the sky. That's kind of interesting. This is a very visual view of the different seasons and how the sun is positioned in the sky and it's the angle of its light on the ground which has a lot to do with what the season is. So if we start over here in winter, we notice the sun is lowest in the sky. And so the amount of, a given amount of sunlight is spread out over a larger area and it never gets very high in the sky. And then of course we move into, from winter we move to spring and we've risen higher in the sky and the sun is more concentrated. 
summer it's maximized summer solstice and the sun's rays are more direct so a given amount of energy from the sun is concentrated in a smaller area greater flux followed by fall which is the same thing corresponding to spring we have we have a in-between situation there so that has a lot to do with what the seasons are and here is a time sequence set of images of the various seasons so we realize by considering this that it's not just the angle of the sunlight but also how many hours a day light there really is and so you probably could guess that this top sequence shows the, the sun during summer solstice and each one of these is an hour apart and if you count them see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 I think if I counted right 15 hours of daylight and then in the middle here would be an equinox and then at the bottom we have winter corresponding to winter solstice 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so far fewer hours of sunlight and more glancing angle result in much less energy from the sun impacting the earth winter time you might be interested as to where the sun is on the celestial sphere at some of these special locations spring summer fall winter I'll give you a couple of examples the one that is perhaps most interesting is the spring equinox the spring equinox again is the crossing of the celestial equator and the ecliptic currently it's located near Pegasus so if you find the constellation Pegasus remember the asterism the great square of Pegasus it's a beautiful asterism in the sky underneath that the spring equinox well I say it's currently located there because it's migrating due to precession precession is that wobbling of the orbit the tilt axis well the tilt axis itself wobbling around so because of that the spring equinox is slowly migrating and in fact because of that effect it takes 26,000 years to go around the entire celestial sphere which corresponds to about one degree per human lifetime so you don't really notice it very much summer solstice where is it well Orion you can find Orion and go to the right shoulder and the raised arm and the summer solstice is currently located very close to that and also right at the base of Gemini also again about one degree per lifetime is how much it moves and similar realities for the autumnal equinox and the winter solstice well what about the view of the Sun at the North Pole and e equator there's a lot of other detail we could specify here also but gets a little intricate but the North Pole is an interesting and relatively simple place to consider what the path of the Sun would look like the celestial equator circles the horizon at the North Pole so this view here is showing that North Pole you your particular view is looking at the celestial equator as you extend your view out and at the equinoxes then where the ecliptic and celestial equator cross the Sun is on the horizon at that point so what does it do it circles around the Sun is just circling on the horizon wouldn't that be a strange sight and then as you progress toward <coughs> summer solstice you have the Sun rising every day the Sun is rising a little bit and it gets up to 23 and a half degrees that's as high as the Sun ever gets so for literally for three months from the equinox it spins around in the sky and three months later it's 23 and a half degrees just moving across the sky 24 7 and then three months of it going back down the other way to the other equinox so for six months you have continuous daylight no darkness at all that'd be really strange the opposite is true for night the next six months you're 
migrating down to 23 and a half degrees below the zero declination point or the the celestial equator actually I should say then what about if you were on the equator well everything's kind of flipped around now you got the Sun instead of making horizontal circles across the sky it's moving vertically overhead so it passes from the Sun goes from east through the zenith to west at the equinoxes so that's the one place on earth where it's gonna go straight up from east and straight over your head and back down west so that's on the equinoxes but over the entire year you realize then the 23 and a half degree alteration from June to June 21st as it migrates north and then 23 and a half degrees migrating south during the other season quote unquote but you might consider what about the seasons is there anything really drastic going on in fact where is the Sun perhaps the the greatest not perhaps but in reality the Sun's energy the greatest will it be at the equinoxes where it's going straight overhead at summer solstice you have 12 hours of daylight but the Sun is a little slightly less of a direct angle same consideration for winter solstice but in all cases you've got a lot of Sun so you don't have the four seasons that we are used to at other latitudes just to consider what would happen at the Arctic Circle which is 23 and a half degrees from the North Celestial Pole so it'd be 66 and a 66 and a half degrees north latitude and what we have is the Sun at one particular point in the year namely the solstice not setting so these are marking the hours along here each one of these slices is an hour 24 hours you notice the Sun sweeping down just skimming the horizon then back up to the highest elevation which would be 23 and a half degrees so we have 24 hour Sun for the first time it's the furthest south location where the, the Sun on the solstice day doesn't set very special place an interesting consequence of the tilt of the earth as it orbits the Sun and the eccentricity of the orbit the non circularity of the orbit is that the actual position of the Sun is different at different times of the year even at the same time of the day in fact if you take images it traces out what's called an analemma this one a new image every nine days well the minimum and maximum heights you may surmise are from the winter solstice where the Sun is lowest in the sky and then summer solstice where it's highest in the sky and then it goes back down what about this back and forth motion that's kind of weird that's a little more subtle but again it has to do with the fact that the Earth's orbit is eccentric and so it's moving faster the Earth is moving faster toward perihelion where it's closest to the Sun and it's moving slower near aphelion where it's further away from the Sun and that just causes the time to arrive at noon to be to take different amounts of time so the the Sun isn't quite at the right location or the average location like it would have if the orbit was circular so here's some more detail and you can research that more on your own if you're interested this is the analemma that would occur on Mars isn't that kind of an interesting shape Here you got little Mars rover other planets would have other shaped analemmas 